Hey, hello guys, Shiva Fire. Um, I want to continue my GD script uh, tutorial series, and today we're gonna go over ways to save data. So, first we're gonna go over uh, file access, and then we're gonna use resources, then we're gonna try out config files, and then we're gonna use project settings. So, let's start with file access. Alright, so here we have a uh, save path and some random data here. Save path needs to be a user whatever those are and then two slashes then the name of your save file and you could use pretty much any uh, extension you want I use data all the time but you could use SAV or if you want to come up with something and have this config password not necessary for the tutorial but there's an option to save with password so let's create a function for that so func uh, let's call it save data and to create a save data we need to first create a file access variable so let's call it save and then we use a file access class we could tell it to open the file path and we want to write to it so file access at write and what we need to do is just pass in the data to it so we say save dot store var and we could pass in that some data there and that should be it but let us change or let's change something so for example Let's change my age, some data, age equals oh, 64, double it up. So that means when we load it back again, we can see if it actually saved. So that should be 64. Now if we run this, let's pass the save on the run ready, save data, and run this now. The data should be stored, and here I have, I'm on Linux, so I need to go to my local share applications, or back at applications but though and then user data and i'm using gd script tutorial cd so here's the save data can't do anything with it here but now to load it now we need to go back to here the funk load data now we need to check if file access file exists that save part then we want to load it save var save equals file access that open and we want to read that data so we say file access at read and we pass that data so we say what did we call it let's first check it first so let's say data here equals save get var now we could print it so let's print the age out so data at age so we saved the data already so let's load the data now so data there you go 64 all right that's it for that if you want to use password, so you say file open encrypted with pass. When you pass in the password here, go back here and uncomment this. And now it's gonna be encrypted even more. Save here. Save data again. So that's now saved. Then we have to do this again here. Copy that and paste that there. Put in the password. We can load it. There you go. That's it for file access. Next, we're going to do resources. All right, guys. So loading resources are a pretty useful way to do stuff like loading a um, a level and having like a loading screen. You would use a uh, threaded loading for that, but that's already supported by the resource loader. So let's show you how to do it. I have a full video on resources, creating them, and different ways to use them. So check that out in the description, maybe, or somewhere in the video. First, we need a custom resource. So I already made one. There it is. Class name. Name it test resource. And we extend resource. Then we have just a string here that is exported back in here. What we need to do now is let's create a save resource function. Save resource. Call it save res. And now we need to just create that function, that uh, resource. So let's call it res test resource. Now we could call it test res and then new and let's set that string to be a value so res dot string equals why not my name again verifier now in order to save it we need to use a resource saver so say res source saver dot save then we pass that res so for the path the save path need to set that to be either a tres file or a res file 
So trez is just basically a text file and res is a, it's a binary file. So let's try out the trez first. Save the trez. I'll save resource now here. So save first. And let's run that scene. It's currently saved, so we could look for it. Open up that file. The file, so we could even just double click it and you see all the data that we saved. So right here is getting the script that's in the project itself. And then the resource, external resource ID, that's that same script. And what values are in the uh, script, the custom values. So we had share a store. And to load that script now, we need to make a load scene. Funk or load resource, I mean. Then, we need to save our, let's call it res equal resource loader. Loader, dot load. Put that save pad in again. Save pad. And we could print that out. Print the resource, that name, a string. And that's it for that. So let's load it here. There you go and it loaded the shiver fire so you could also load entire scenes so this would be useful for a loading screen for example so here i have a test scene a shiver fire label so over back here to do that let's delete all this here or no, let's keep this here we just call the resource part so that is test scene right here here it is Remember this loads the pack scene, so now we need to call instantiate on that. So say say var scene equal res dot instantiate instantiate tell that right, and then we need to add child and scene. So now this node will contain the child test scene. So let's load that up, and you'll see it. Actually. There you go. Share fire, spring it up there. If we come over to the uh, remote settings, this node this a scene and that's it for resources next we're going to go over using config files all right guys now for config files these are useful for saving game configurations like resolution and various performance settings and you could do other a few other stuff maybe even controller configs stuff like that so we're gonna go through this pretty quick all right so to save a config file we need to create a new config file from the config class and I changed, uh, I added Chev as a nickname to this data. And now all you have to do now is say config set value. You need to set its section. And that's like the compartment, like maybe resolution, maybe you'd use or something else like that. So for example, this is player one. We could have another section that's for player two. And the data is key. That's the name of the data, save data. And then the data itself, that's just the old dictionary. Then you have to call save and for the save part we need to change that to config it could be anything but the standard is to use a cfg or even an any file so let's go with cfg so it's basically just a text file then we could run this file so see save config so you could see how it looks that should be saved look in the settings again go to here godot data and here it is see the section is player one then we have save data and then the value of the save data and here's the nickname that we added now to load it let's go here we have a load config create a config file again and we load that save part then we set say get value player one the section the key they want to get and then we pass in the default value so that's whatever this is without any changes just in case it failed to load the data it returns that data again then we could print out something from it so i'm printing out the nickname so let's go here load config and then we could test it there you go chef that's my nickname and that's it config files are pretty simple pretty open-ended so you know yeah in games people would mess with these config file settings that's pretty much what it is you could still encrypt it but i'm not gonna go over that in this video so next we're gonna do project settings all right, so for project settings, uh, you, this is more useful for creating um, save data for like plugins. I use it for my plugin as, as well. Could save stuff directly to it, and it's saved inside this actual file, the Godot file, file itself here. Uh, let me see if I have anything here. It is. I was testing it before, so that's basically saved there. 
and this is actually a config file itself as well let's go back here let's just do it again for the sake of doing it okay here we had some data and i add old age put 50 there so you say project settings set setting data that's the name of the put data the key and we pass in that some data mm, we have this here so we added that to it then you have to call project settings that save and that pretty much saves the data there you can run that and remember if you make a change here it will ask to reload that Godot file so let's say old age 51 for example 53 why not and run it again and whenever we exit it should ask for a pop-up but i guess it doesn't oh well now let's load that same data oh i didn't save it that's why so let's save i realize i'm not doing it save setting oh it should work there you go it's asking to reload because it's newer now that value is 53 so let's now load the data so func load config or load settings let's just call it get settings because technically it's already loaded we're just grabbing it from the data we're getting settings data and if it doesn't return anything we get the default data that's right here here you go and then we oops, put it into the d was the data then print out old age we could say get settings and that should print out 53 there you go All right that should be it for the tutorial uh if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and like and subscribe and see you in another video i'm also streaming a survival game project that i'm just doing for fun so i'll stream that maybe thursday sometime this week so take care guys thanks for watching